I will respond to this question, uh, this comment about that. When we come to church, sometimes we see people who get angry easily. Even when we don't, when we say something, you know, normal to them, they will get angry. Now, if you remember, I talked about when people talk, they have the verbal message and then the emotional message. And then when people take, when they hear people talk, they have to the, uh, hear the message and, and also the, they take the take it emotionally. Now, sometimes when people have emotions and then this person will take it emotionally. But sometimes even when this person talks very peacefully, even with love, this person can get angry. For instance, someone comes to a person and say, well, I um, want to do something. Uh, can I do something to help you uh, in your situation? I, I, you know, uh, whatever situation it is. This person could get angry and say, do you think you're better than I am? You think you can help me? You think I cannot help myself? <laughs> I mean, because he doesn't like people to offer help. I mean, but seldom do people, uh, people like that. But I'm just using an exaggeration. Or someone says, how, is, how are you and your girlfriend? And the person says, what, is, what does that have to do with you? <laughs> because they, they have some problem with the girlfriend. Or, or themselves, they themselves have some low self-image. So we, we look at ourselves, and we look at the people around us, and you notice some people get angry easily, and, or family members. Now family members get angry easier. Why? Because they don't want to pretend anymore. And the real self come out. And they don't think they have to show love. In a family, they just say, you didn't do it. Basically, in marriage and in family, most people demand others, you didn't do it. You should do that. Now, but the Bible teaches love. What can I do for you? Can I do anything to help you? And so, the Bible teaches love, but people always, they demand. Instead of making the words, uh, love your wife, husband, love your wife, as Christ loved the church, they would say, husbands, demand your wife. <laughs> demand from your wife. So, people, you know, very often they have lies in the heart. When my wife doesn't do that, I'll get angry. Now this are lies. So we have to untangle these lies. Many people have lies, for instance, saying, if you get angry, you're more powerful. If you talk loudly, you're more powerful than the next person. And you can convince the person. So these are lies that people believe. So we need to help people untangle these lies, to understand the lies uh, when they talk like that. And uh, and then help them. But we don't want to say that it's a lie. We want to say that, um, do you want the marriage to improve? Do you think your marriage can improve? And then guide the person to, to realize the problems and find a solution. So whatever it is, when you see a person behave a certain way, then you can help the person. Let me share with you one experience I have on a mission field. There was one person I knew on the internet, and we, I knew him for years, and then he started to arrange for me mission trips. And, and the first time, he told me I can go to a certain place, and then I agreed to go, and then before I left, I, I asked him, I asked him, uh, when I come, when I get off the, the plane, do I, you know, from the airport, when I take the bus to the train station, I have to go from the, from the airport to the train station. Do I take the bus? He told me there was a bus I can take to the train station. Do I take the bus on the same side as the airport or the opposite side? Do I cross the street? And he get frustrated. Why do you ask little things like this? And then, now I realized there's some problem, but I did not talk to him about that at that point. But I just told him, I have to be dragging the luggage. And I will look for a bus stop. And then when I go to the bus stop, I wait for the bus, and the bus comes, and then they, says, they say, oh, this bus doesn't go to the train station. And then I cross the street to the other side. So I don't want to be doing that. I don't want to cross, you know, cross the street. I know where I'm going. So, okay, so he, and then he said, actually, I don't know. <laughs> and then he, he, I thought he knew. 
He could have said, I don't know. You find out. Okay. Now I realize he has some problem. But then, I haven't seen him personally. I only saw him on a picture on the internet. And, and I know that for someone like that, it's not time for me to talk to him yet about his problem. So when I saw him, I just went as normal to one, go to the mission field and do ministry uh, with, to, the, uh, to, to the churches there. And then on the way back, when he took me to the train station, he talked to me. He said, Pastor Yip, the moment you start to preach, I have a total different image of you. Before you preach, I did not understand you so well. But when you start to preach, I felt the power. I felt, I felt, I so saw how you are. I thank God for that. I give glory to that. Then I realized he was open to me. And then I said to him, thank you. Thank you for saying that. It's very nice of you to say that. Um, and I care about you. And I want to ask you one question. And then I said, when I came and asked you, when I get off the airport, do I stay on the same side or cross the street to take the bus to the uh, train? I noticed that. I said, I noticed that you were angry. Or you were unhappy. I forgot how I said it. I noticed that you were unhappy. Can you tell me why? Now, notice my language. I did not say, when I asked you whether I stay on the same side across the street, you got angry. That way it makes him feel offended. But I said, I noticed that when I asked you whether I stay on the same side across the street, I noticed that you were unhappy. I, I said, I noticed that. Instead of saying, you were angry. I noticed that. It doesn't mean it's true. And can you tell me what happened? And then he told me. He said, I get angry easily. easily. When people ask me detail, I get angry easily. And then I, then I explore more about why he did that. And he tell me more. That he was always angry from childhood. That his, um, uh, that, you know, at his home, even, he was like that. And with the people around him, the people around him were like that too. So he told me the story. And I, I tried to guide him and counsel him. And I guide him, I counsel him more on the internet. And one day he watched my teaching, The Joyful Victory. And he said, wow, oh, that is really good teaching. When you talk about how to handle those people's hurt, uh, hurtful words, how they hurt people, how, how you handle it, there's a lot of wisdom. And so in the process, I was able to help this person who wants to serve God to become a better person. So I observe. I observe the person and I find the right moment to counsel. I did not counsel when I first arrived. I wait for him to say, say that something and then before I counsel him. And there was another story. We want to wait for the right moment. One time someone asked me to go and pray for a Christian's daughter who has evil spirit and also mental disorder. But this person who took me there told me that this man whose daughter has problem, this man has a problem with another minister and have yelled with the minister and they, they are not on good terms now. And they have problems. So the father is problem. And now the father asked me to help the daughter. Now I realize this is a problem. I have to help the husband, the father first before I can help the daughter. And then, and then the father came to meet us and take us to the daughter. And then on the way, I talked with him. Talked with him about a number of things, how God is wonderful, and then how God can heal people. And then he said, yes, I want that healing. I'm happy about that, I like that. And I know that is the right moment. And then I said to him, can I talk to you about something? He said, yes. And I said to him, I heard that. You have some problem with the ministry. Can I, can I hear about it? I didn't say you were wrong. I said, can I hear about it? And then he told me what happened. And then I 
before we went up to the home, I took him somewhere and listened to him. First I listened to him, listened to his side of the story. And then I tried to guide him to understand the minister and to forgive the minister and to be at peace with the minister. And later I was able to have the two of them say sorry to each other and forgive each other. So I, whenever I hear a problem, I will ask, always ask, when can I talk to the person? When is the right time? And what is the right way to say it to him? Now if I just tell him, I heard that you are angry with another minister, how can you ask me to pray for your daughter? You have to repent. He's not going to change. Because that's something, a long-term hurt, a long-term problem. We have to untangle the problem, help the person before I can help the father and then help the daughter. Can you, can you understand this? And have you seen problematic people in the church? Very hard to help because they have problems that are tangled together. Tangled together that the life is totally, you know, maybe partly out, out of control that they could not handle the problem and we have to learn them to untangle the problem gradually to take care of the problem. So that is the wisdom of counseling to break down the barriers, to break down the sins, step by step, to help the person to repent and turn to God. So that's the, the wisdom and the necessity of counseling. I hope you understand that. For instance, if I notice anyone I'm ministering to have problems, I will for sure talk to the person. I will for sure, but I will find a way to talk. Find a way to show acceptance, I will not just say you were wrong. You have spiritual problem, I don't talk like that. If I talk like that, immediately the person will build up defense. Because in the world, people are used to hearing negative words, criticism, and they will build up defense. So I have to care about the person, how do you feel about uh, yourself? How do you feel about relationship with God? How do you feel about your relationship with the family members? And has those things affected you? Has a relationship affected you? And then he will start to talk. And then I know where to help him. You might say it takes time. But when you can help a person, and then after you help the person, you say, now I've helped you. Do you find this helpful? And he said, yes. And then you say, do you want to serve God also to help other people to take care of the problems so that they can be free of problems and serve God? And that is something you can do too. And that way we encourage people to serve God. When we encourage people to serve God, we don't just tell them, you serve God, God will reward you. That's what we tell them too. But we want to tell them, God has helped you. You can help other people too. Do you want, you know, that your problems is taken care of, that you learn how to help other people and, and uh, to be able to uh, counsel people or, or minister to people. Now one thing I want to remember very well, in counseling, don't teach so fast. The moment you do that, for instance, you notice a person who gets angry easily, and then you start to talk to him. Let, you know, don't let your anger stay until sunset. And then you say, are you telling me I'm angry? <laughs> and then you can say, <laughs> So, that's, He's not ready for that. But then, and then we can ask him about his feeling towards certain things and, you know, and how, can I help you with, can I pray for you? Is there anything I can pray for you? That's one thing you can say to men. Is there anything I can pray for you? And there can be a ministry time too. And uh, before the church start, you can say, okay, now our, our co-ministers will come to you and ask you, is there anything I can pray for you? And then you go to the people and then the mature people will go to the other people and then ask, what can I, is there anything I can pray for you? And the person says, yes, I have problem with, if they are willing to say, I have problem with my wife. I have anger. I cannot sleep well. Now, I cannot sleep well reveal a lot of problems behind them. So, all this, you'll find out. And then you pray for the person and you start the path of helping the person from that time on. That, so that could open the way for counseling, for helping if there's a time to pray for each other uh, before, the, before the service.